I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino of More Than Organized, and um, I'm really excited to have Lisa Griffith on the show today. But let's talk a little bit about what exactly the Streamlined Connection is. Because most, we were just talking about this ourselves, but most people don't realize that organization is the key to freedom, wealth, and prosperity. And they feel stressed because of the overwhelm and the time it takes them to find their things. And so it's all about the stuff, the disorganization, both in your mental space and your physical space. And it's not just about being tidy. It's really about that powerful connection between your internal and external space and that control you crave and the freedom you seek, right? It's really hard to be free and in control at the same time. And so understanding how that works together is kind of the goal of this um, program. And the organization piece, the keeping control of the clutter or your schedule or where your mind wanders off to, that's what really allows um, for that kind of catalytic um, improvement in your day-to-day -day life if you are struggling with these things. It takes that overwhelm right out of it. Um, and because when you do have enough control and a bit of freedom, you're freer to build your wealth, right? Whether it's starting your own business, running your own business, working differently, getting a side hustle, whatever it is, that connection between mindset, simplicity, and focus is going to make it easier. So that's what we like to talk about. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a certified professional organizer. Yes, I sat for a test. So did Lisa. <laughs> we know our stuff, right? Um, I'm also a money breakthrough business coach. And so um, I study how habits affect your productivity and the role of your money mindset on your clutter as well as on your productivity. So that's who I am. Now let's hear a little bit about Lisa. She is a productivity coach and as I said, a certified professional organizer as well. She pulls on her training um, and teaching and speaking experience to when she works with her clients. So it's really um, about that transferring of the skills, right? It's about how do we help our clients do that? Um, so she's been through a couple iterations of her business as well, which means she's grown it. She's changed it. She's pivoted when needed. And that's the kind of thing that can happen when you are kind of aware of how your mind is affecting the outcomes that you are getting. So I love that. Um, her company is The Organized Way. And or, or it was the organized way, and now it's Griffith Productivity Solutions. And so you can find out more about her. There's going to be the details in the description and such. Um, but she works with people virtually as well as in person, just like me. So we're going to have this fabulous conversation today about how we work differently and how we work the same so that other people can learn from us and realize, you know, once again, no two people respond to a system in the same way. And so the more I can share of other people's insights as well as my own, the more chance you're gonna have some success because something's gonna resonate with you and kick you into gear to get it taken care of. Um, so welcome, Lisa. I'm so glad you're on the show today. Me too, thanks for having me. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Excellent. Um, so I have a few side notes, but really I wanna, I wanna find out first, why you chose to be an organizer and a productivity coach. What what prompted you to move this direction in your career? Because I know you didn't start this way. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I started out a million years ago uh, as a teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a musician and a teacher, a music teacher in schools, uh, director of performing arts groups, church music director. And I did that for the most of my adult life uh, until my youngest was getting ready to flee the nest. And at that point, I will totally admit to you, I was a fried green tomato. I was burned out and I loved teaching, but I was looking, I was turning 50 and I was looking to make a change. And I had always been uh, the person in the family who was, and the person among my friend group who was the organized one. You know, when any, anybody ever had an issue, they would come to me, can you help me? I need some advice. Even when I was teaching, uh, I would have other faculty members come to me and say, oh, 
your classroom is so organized, everybody knows where everything is, how do you do it? And in among family members, I mean, it is a, it's a blessing and a curse to be the organized one in the family, mm -hmm. because then when tough things happened, um, like at one point in our life, we lost uh, three out of four of our parents within a very short period of time, my husband and I. And because he and I are, are both the oldest and the responsible ones, as everybody says, but I was the organized ones, we had to be executors. Mm -hmm. And that's, it was another layer of how do I keep this all straight? So when I was looking to find another way to live my life, um, I went to a little bit of career coaching with a woman who specialized in coaching midlife women in their in their lives and how to find a new way, a new career. Mm -hmm. And she said to me after we went through all the tests and all the talking, if you had nothing else to do for an afternoon, what would you do? And I said, I would organize a closet. And she said, have you ever considered being a professional organizer? And I said, that's a thing. <laughs> you can do that and get paid. So Fantastic. that's kind of where I started. Yeah. OK, um, we're going to have to take a quick break. But um, I love that story that you went through coaching yourself to figure out you needed to be a coach of a sort. Um, yeah. So we're going to pick that up when we come back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. I'm speaking today with Lisa Griffith of um, Griffith Productivity Solutions, and she was just telling us how she decided to become an organizer as her second career. Um, and using her organized skills, of course, she approached it in an organized manner and went and figured out what she wanted as the first step. <laughs> so many of my clients, anyway, don't know what they want when they start. And that's part of the decision making problem, right? Uh, that you're so good at? Well, I think I'm good at helping people make decisions. Right. I think that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> part of as an organizer and productivity coach is making people realize that the reason they're stalled is because they haven't made a decision, whether mm -hmm. it's deciding to get rid of a, a physical item or deciding to block something out of their schedule or to redetermine their priorities. It's about making a decision. Right. And, you know, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard the Barbara Hempel or the uh, veteran organizer who always said, uh, clutter is just postponed decisions. Yes. And I think that applies not just to physical stuff, but it applies to stuff on our calendars and and the things that we do in our lives and our time and the people we associate with. You know, there is such a thing as relationship clutter, too. So yeah. making some tough decisions sometimes is at the heart of getting started in any organizing or productivity coaching process for me. Yeah, I I found it really interesting how hard, you know, I kick a few decisions down the road, but so mm -hmm. many people kick every decision down the road. And it's kind of like, yeah. wait, how do we reconcile this? And it took me a while to find some framework that I really liked to use with my clients about making decisions. Do you have a couple of go-to kind of frameworks that you use to help people make decisions? Well, the, I always ask um, the big question for me is when people are really struggling with and not so much with stuff decisions as it is with lifestyle or time decisions. Yeah. Will this matter? Let, let's consider how important is this going to be in 10 minutes or hmm. 10 days or 10 weeks or 10 years? Let's put it in perspective. You know, where's Where's, how important is this? You know, mm -hmm. I get that choosing a color for the paint in your living room is something that will have consequences for a while, but it's not something you can't change easily. So let's mm -hmm. put this decision in perspective. Whereas, should I change jobs? Or, right. you know, those big decisions, that is going to matter in 10 years. You know, mm -hmm. should I 
where are my priorities as far as my time management goes? I have a conflict. I perpetually have this client who wants to meet at this time, but my kid's soccer game is at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have that conversation about in 10 years, how will, important will it be that you got to your kid's soccer game versus maybe it would be more important to meet with this client because it could mean a huge income boost for you, which could make a big difference 10 years down the line. So right. we start with that basic question, 10 mm -hmm. minutes, 10, you know, 10 minutes, 10 months, 10 years. Let's look at it short term and long term and put it yeah. in perspective. I love that. I don't use that one that often, but mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of starting with with small decisions and building mm -hmm. on your your decision making. Yeah. Um, thing, but that one, the imagining out is really handy when for the big decisions and um, when they struggle with projects, starting projects. I find it yeah. a helpful one for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, the other thing I say, especially because because I do office organizing, mm -hmm. um, paper is such a burden for so many people, and they struggle. Am I going to need this? And my and my question to them is, okay, if you let it go, what would be the worst thing that would happen? Right. Can you find it again online? Or is it, you know, is it your kid's birth certificate? It's probably going to be tough to get it back. How mm -hmm. hard will it be to recover right. it if you really do need it? And 99.9% yeah. .9 of the paper in our lives, we could get back in some way, or mm -hmm. we're just not going to need it at all. There are those yep. very, very few things that would be very, almost impossible to get back. Not much. Yeah. Not much. It turns yeah. out almost everything is replaceable yeah. or um, supplementable. <laughs> or how much effort is it going to take you if you really need this? What kind of effort will it take to get it back if you let it go? Right. Um, yeah. I often use the example, I had one of my very first clients had had a stock certificate from the American Fruit Company, which later became Dole. So it, when it split, like it was worth a lot. Sure. They couldn't find the original stock certificate, but we could find every other trade that they could have just called their broker to get a backup copy of all of that. And then they finally found the certificate, but there was no indication of what date they had purchased it. And so it, it it always is kind of like, well, what's your end result? Are, is, are these trade things part of your mutual fund or are they part of individual stocks? Like there's a lot of factors that have to come into it, but sure. knowing first off what records are available and how old those records are can be a big factor of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, we have to take another quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Streamlined Connection. This is the Bold Brave TV Network. We're speaking with Lisa Griffith and we are talking about decisions and boundaries today and how those things can lead to a more productive life. So we will be right back to talk more about that. The Streamlined Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are under somewhere. And I'm speaking with Lisa Griffith today about decision making and boundaries. Um, so let's let's get into that a little deeper. Like, what is it about making a decision about something that helps us set up a boundary? Well, honestly, you got to make the decision before you can set the boundary, right? Mm -hmm. It has to happen first. And when I do productivity coaching, which is all about how am I going to use my time? What's the most valuable use of my time? What my priorities are? And a lot of my clients, and I was good, I would say across the board, I was going to say more women than men, but I think it affects all of us uh, about setting up, making a decision to say, I am not going to allow this, or mm -hmm. this is going to be, this is what my schedule is at 6 p.m. I'm going to do like chopped hands up off my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to set that boundary, but the decision has to happen first. Yes. And part of making the decision is, okay, let's sit down. The first thing I talk about with my clients is setting those priorities. It's mm -hmm. that Stevie big rocks thing, right? Yep. Where you put 
the stuff in the jar, he puts the big rocks in, and then the gravel and the sand and then the water. And the moral of the story isn't, um, no matter how organized you are, you can always fit something else in, it's put the big rocks in first. So that's my big thing with my clients is to say, what are your big rocks? After we talk about that example, what are your big rocks? What have to go in first so that you have room in your schedule? And then you have to make the decision, okay, because I've decided that this is a big rock, I'm gonna draw this boundary here because right. my big rocks is spending time with my family. And if I'm on my laptop on my phone through dinner and all through the night, um, then I'm not accomplishing one of my big rocks. So I have to set that boundary. So one yeah. comes from the other, you know? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, and and it's so interesting, right? How people will have a big rock and they have no problem telling you it's their priority and then their schedule doesn't reflect that in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And the boundaries they have set become all about the shoulds and the expectations of others instead of designing it themselves by making the decisions. Yeah. You find that as well? Absolutely. I mean, I will say it's funny. I always joke with my clients. Okay, well, you've said this is your big rock. Let's look at your calendar. Let's look <laughs> right. at your checkbook. Let's look at your credit card mm -hmm. statement. Do yeah. you deal with that all the time? Does mm -hmm. do all of these things reflect that this for say, for example, it's self-care that uh, exercise and eating right is one of my big, ro big rocks. Well, let's look at your calendar. Let's look at how you're spending your money. Is it really a big rock or mm -hmm. is that what you desire it to be? But you haven't yet made the decision to say, I have to draw this boundary and this boundary and this boundary in my time and in my energy so that I can spend time on that big rock. So yeah, it absolutely is crucial to, to look at those things. Yeah. So even, um, I, you know, we've both been working a lot with hybrid work mm -hmm. scenarios and um, clients, but how many people have not set up a boundary around working from home? Like this, during these hours, this is my home office and you may not interrupt me. Exactly. And and there's levels of boundary, right? I mean, it's just like in the office or your cubicle. Do you have some sort of open door policy versus a closed door policy at certain points to get the deep work done? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I used to work in a stock room with um, no doors around my office. It was literally a desk in a corner right. and it was fine most of the time. But every once in a while, everyone would just kind of gather around my desk to chat. <laughs> and I, had to, like, mm -hmm. I put tape on my floor. I was like, you may not stand this close to me. <laughs> you know, it was only four feet away from where they were, but it was like, I actually really need this space. You can't just be draped over my desk while I'm trying to work. <laughs> you were like the, the the lighthouse on the shore that everyone was attracted to. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it can be as simple as putting a note on your door or closing the door or just saying, stating it out loud. Mm -hmm. This is my work time. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And again, here we are drawing a boundary, right? You literally mm -hmm. physically put a physical boundary on the I floor. did. You know, and I have to, I, I was interesting because I was analyzing the other day because with pe so many people now working from home, a lot of the suggestions that I made to people when I worked with them who had to work in an open office setting, kind of mm -hmm. like what you were in, but in a, in a corporate setting where yeah. everybody's in one big room, you know, and all, nobody has any physical boundaries. And some people do well in that situation, but some people really struggle. Mm -hmm. And to say to them, all right, what boundary can we put up for you so that when you're trying to do focused work, it will be a signal to people, please don't interrupt me during this time. Sometimes it's, if I have my headphones on, I'm trying to do focused work, please don't interrupt me. Yep. Um, I had one guy who we literally got him one of those yellow uh, caution signs with the circle mm -hmm. and the and the slash through it that said interruptions. And mm -hmm. when he hung that on the side of his desk with a little command hook, that was a signal. But he had to decide to say, this yeah. is the boundary. And he had to communicate it clearly to the people he was working with. Yeah, and the communication is so key. Like how many times do people set a boundary and then don't share it with the people that are breaking the boundary? 
Exactly. Like, well, they don't know. Exactly. <laughs> and if you don't tell them, or if you tell them and then you don't reinforce it. it. Yeah. Right. And it's the same when people started working from home, I thought, oh my gosh, it's the same kind of issue because a lot of people didn't have a home office. They set up on the dining room table and their kids are doing their virtual schoolwork over here. And somebody was playing video games over here and there, you know, there were no boundaries at all. And I said, okay, this is like an open workspace. We have to figure out what you need to do with your the people you live with whether it's mm -hmm. kids or whether it's roommates to say when you see this don't interrupt me or turn the tv down or mm -hmm. whatever that might be. yeah yeah it's um it's availability it's like what are you making yourself available for and what are you sacrificing every time you break that boundary you already decided with yourself um yeah. Yeah, it's that commitment to yourself first. It is, but there's <laughs> guilt that goes along with it, right? There's a lot of guilt that goes along with setting boundaries, I think. Yeah, we'll pick that up after our break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is uh, the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. We're talking to Lisa Griffith about boundaries and decision making, and uh, the next bit's going to be really good, so don't miss it. <laughs> um, we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Lisa and I were just speaking about guilt and how that can make it feel like we shouldn't set boundaries, especially when we're working at home. But, you know, how do you have any ways that you help your clients navigate around the guilt and and what have you noticed about people's different levels of guilt? Well, you know, one of the first things I ask my clients and when they're feeling guilt, particularly around family stuff and kids, mm -hmm. and I think this affects, I don't, I don't want to be sexist when I say it, but it does seem to affect women more than it does men. I see it more mm -hmm. in my female clients than I do in my male clients. And they say, well, I should do this and I should do that. And you know, I love that expression. You got to stop shooting all over yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but I have said, I say to my clients, have you actually asked your family? Right. Have you actually <laughs> sat down with your kids and said, well, you know, does it bother you when mom is, you know, she asks you to not interrupt her during this certain time? What ask, find out. It's that whole communication piece again. Yeah. You know, it's, like uh, I had one client who at holiday time, she would go absolutely bonkers and kill herself, knock herself out to get everything, you know, the baking and the decorating and all the events, mm -hmm. this, this and that. And she was sick after every Christmas. She was she would run herself into the ground. And I said, she said, well, it's so important to my family. And I said, have you ever asked your family? I, would your family rather have you? relaxed and not exhausted and let go of some of this stuff or is all this really important to them and yeah. she looked at me and said oh hmm i never really have and i said well let's do that and she did and it it made her realize her kids were like well we don't care about this and we don't care about that but we really like this part yeah and it made her realize that it was all in her own head and a lot of that guilt was self-induced really it wasn't yeah. coming from outside it was coming from the inside all yeah. the yeah i i mean i totally get that 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 was self-motivated in that thing however women are also bombarded non-stop oh, yeah. with being instagram perfect and your home must be ready at all times and i gotta tell you as organizers most of us aren't perfect we just are really good at knowing we can catch up or reset a room quickly mm -hmm when mm -hmm. it gets away from us during a project or an event or something. So we have the knowledge that we can recover from yeah. whatever is happening. We don't think it needs to be 100% perfect all the time because that would interfere with doing the things we wanna do. Well, exactly. And having a, you know, if there's a system in place underneath the, mm -hmm. the it's array, it's so much easier to say, well, this is gonna take me 20 minutes to put it all back together instead of, Oh my gosh, it's such a mess. Nobody, nothing has a home. I don't know where anything goes. And that becomes a major project, right? Yeah. You know, 
having those systems in place, but realizing that tidy does not equal organized. And that makes yeah. me crazy. It may look perfect. And just like you said in the media, and there are, I don't want to run down any shelter magazine, but we all know that those pictures of those, in particular, mm -hmm. the home offices, <laughs> you know, I've had so many women bring me a picture and say, I want my home office to look like this. And it's this picture in Real Simple Magazine where there's not one piece of paper on the desk, you know, and there are two mm -hmm. pens in a jar and it's perfect. It's beautiful. Sure. But it's not real life. That's not, that's not real life. That's not functional. Mm -hmm look pretty but it's not functional correct it's all about that system underneath and it's mm -hmm. all about setting your making decisions to set your own expectations for how you want to live and communicate um and it goes to your clutter as well like sometimes i have people show me those pictures in magazines and it'll have lots of stuff like your your office right now looks great i don't know how much resetting you had to do to get your background really great but you put thought into it back wall which there's no there there may be stuff on the floor and on the desk around it oh. but it is always <laughs> like that so that i don't have to worry about it when i get exactly. on exactly yeah this exactly. part is set i have yep. to move a couple things that are usually here over there and yep. i have to move a, something that i store on top of my printer down to the floor just so it's not distracting but it's my basket of work that goes through the printer like the stuff to scan <laughs> yeah and so yeah. it there's a system back there but it takes me because i have a system i have to reset every time i do this tv show so my whole office i have to put things on the windows i have to unfurl some extra lights i have to get the microphone out that stuff's not in my office most of the time that's right put to the side in the place where i pull it out and deploy it and i can set the whole office up and tear it down in 10 minutes either side. So it's not in the way the rest of the time. So yeah. you have to make decisions of what to set. Yeah. And what exactly. to be flexible with. Yeah. Exactly. I know it doesn't matter how crazy my desk is. No, nobody's going to see it, you know, because I know what my backdrop looks like. I have to deal with the light. I have to turn the phone off, turn another light on we're done and mm -hmm. underneath here it could be I have uh, right now I've got three projects going right mm -hmm. but everything looks copacetic <laughs> <laughs> right but I would I would be tempted right. to show people my actual desk and what's going on except then it'll take away from the conversation so you guys can look up my Facebook page I frequently post what it looks like in here and we'll be doing more of it because apparently people want to know that kind of thing I think it makes people feel more secure in their own mm -hmm. mess, such as it is. It's, it, there is such thing as an organized mess. You know, my yes. husband's desk in his office is the classic example of an organized mess. He yeah. knows where every single thing is. If you walked in there and said, where's the paper for da-da-da-da, he would go -na 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 -na, through the pile. Whoosh, there it is. Mm -hmm. But t he's got a system in place. Yeah. And while yeah. it might not look beautiful you know nobody's nobody from the local paper is going to be coming taking pictures of his organized office but mm -hmm. it's functional and yeah. it's he, he doesn't waste time digging through piles and trying to find stuff because it's there's a system yeah yeah um i have an example i'm going to give after the break we've got to take a quick break but we're slowly but surely making this connection everyone that decisions lead to um, better productivity and boundaries, and that in turn leads to less clutter or functional clutter, um, which is completely different than tidy. And we're going to continue that conversation, that piece of it, after the break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. We're talking to Lisa Griffith of Griffith Productivity Solutions today um, about boundaries, decision making, um, and how all of those things also connect to your environment. You know how how you set up your space and what the difference between tidy and clutter is. Um, and we were just getting to this example um, I saw on Facebook last week, um, and I honestly can't remember what group it was in, but it was one of the organizer groups, and someone posted a picture of a closet 
that was actually quite organized. I was kind of impressed. It was very nice, but it was a little bit overstuffed. And they wanted, they asked the question, how do I organize this? What suggestions do you have for organizing this? And I pointed out that it was organized, but it needed decluttering. Mm. And it set off a bit of a firestorm about, well, what do you mean? This is, this looks terrible. And I'm like, yeah, but all of the shirts are together. All of the pants are together. All the shoes are, not only are the shoes there, but they're overstuffed in a shoe rack. It's not like the people don't have organized habits. Mm-hmm. They just didn't do a, a weed out. And so I'm curious, it, you know, it goes to what we were saying a, a minute ago about it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to have a system and changing a system just so it looks better doesn't make it functional in any way, shape or form. So what do you have any thoughts or insights about that as well? Well, yeah, I think, first of all, I think people I don't know if the right word is conflate decluttering and organizing as yes. the same thing. They're not. No. You declutter before you can organize, right? right? Because if you don't, you're just rearranging the same stuff. As my yeah. friend used to say, it's like it's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, right? Yes. And you can throw things into containers and put a label on it. But if the container is still overflowing and you don't have space for four more containers with the same kind of stuff in it, then you're really not organizing. So you got to right. declutter first. You got to make, mm-hmm. here's the decision part. You yes. got to make the decisions about, is this important? Do I use it? Do I, do I need it? Do I love it? Those three questions we all say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that a lot of folks equate the stuff with being organized. Yes. The bins, those beautiful, oh, those beautiful, clear bins with the perfect labels on them. Um, I think they equate, if I have the right stuff, I will be organized. Yeah. And something that I end almost every presentation with is, it's not about the stuff. It's the same thing when it comes to time. Mm-hmm. What's the best planner? What's the best calendar for me to use? What's what app will get me organized? And my reaction is always none of them. You know, none of them will get you organized. It's not about the app or the basket. It's mm-hmm. about what's happening up here first. Right. So, you know, and you're going to ask me what my favorite organizing tool is. I don't mean to I jump on, but yeah. my favorite organizing tool is my brain yay it's <laughs> brain it's not just my brain it's my client's brain too your favorite organizing tool is not a thing mm-hmm. it's the process that you go through to think through everything and make decisions and set some boundaries whether the boundary is time or whether the boundary is my sweaters are going to live here and the boundary is going to be when that space is full i'm not going to buy any more sweaters or I have to let one go before I bring another one in. So I love that using the space itself as the limiter and the boundary. Cause I say that all the time, you know, people are like, I don't have enough room for my stuff. And it's like, well, take all the containers off of the shelf and just put the stuff back on the shelf and you'll have room. Yeah. Cause they buy bins that are like angled. Yeah. And I'm oh, like, you're losing space. six inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Your I, pantry, you I, could fit. Two whole more rows. I just said that to my sister who said, well, you know, when I, I want to buy some bins for this space, what's your advice? I said, get what you like, but don't get bins with slanted sides. And she looked at me and said, why? And I said, well, think about it. <laughs> when you put them next to each other. Play yeah. some Tetris for a while, people. Play right. some Tetris. Um, Yeah, no, I love that. And I love thinking about your planner or your calendar as the container for the things you want to do. And again, that's the limiters. You can't say yes to 12 things that happen at the same time. And you can't say yes to -to back-to-back meetings because you need enough buffer to walk down the hall to the other meeting. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And maybe you have to pee. I'm just saying. God forbid we should leave ourselves (laughs) time or to eat, right? Right. I said to one client who booked herself back to back to back to back, and this is before the pandemic. So she literally had to walk from one meeting space to the other or drive. And Mm -hmm. I said to her, 
Well, you have a meeting from one to two and your next meeting is in the next building from two to three. So you either have to leave the one meeting early or start the next meeting late. And I said, what's what's it going to be? And she just looked at me and she said, oh, I never thought about that. I'm always arriving late or starting meetings late because I'm always in a rush. Right. Right. So just because you say you have these many things, this many things to do, if it doesn't fit into the box of your schedule, it means right. you need to declutter. Right. Right. So yeah. what would happen if you worked with one fewer meeting per day so that you had that buffer time for all your other meetings and you arrived on time and you were confident and you felt more prepared and your clients and coworkers saw you in that light as well, instead of yeah. the scatterbrained, always rushed, not sure we can count on you person that's right. appearing when you do back to back to back to back. What and would happen? You didn't always have to feel like you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> right. Because you left time. <laughs> you didn't have to take a whole day off to go to the doctor to get the medicine yeah. for the bladder infection. Like, yeah, all of it. It's all connected, people. <laughs> And you do doing it to yourself as well, you know, like, and once you realize that your decisions made that happen, whether intentional or not, you yeah. can become more intentional about what your decisions are and get a better result. Absolutely. And when you make those decisions and you communicate the boundaries that you want to set, how empowered are you? I mean, it's so empowering to feel like yes. I'm in control of what happens to my time and my stuff and my life. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely gives you a, you know, we obviously are have an illusion that we're in control all the time. But if you make those decisions and set those boundaries, you really are more in control. Yeah, and, and at least we have a locus of control. We can control that up to a certain point. Exactly. Um, and use that moving forward to, um, make all of our decisions better. So, oh, I'm super excited. Thank you so much for sharing these things today, Lisa. Oh, thank you um, for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, we've got to take one more quick break. We'll do a quick check-in and wrap up after this break. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Link's here somewhere, down there, I think. Um, so I'd love to hear your kind of tied up in a bow thoughts about how you feel decision making and boundaries relate to organizing and 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 clutter control actually productivity yeah so i guess the bottom line for me is that it's not it's never about the stuff mm -hmm. it's never about the tools it's not about the baskets or the bins or the apps or the planners, it's about what happens up here first. Mm -hmm. And what happens up here has to be the big picture stuff first. You have to figure out, first of all, why am I feeling so disorganized? Why am I disorganized? Why am I feeling like my time is just running away like water down the drain? Uh, I don't have enough time to do everything that I need to do, let alone the things I want to do. So let's analyze that first and let's get mm -hmm. at the root of that. And then usually what that is delayed or complete lack of decision making and a lack of boundary setting. So mm -hmm. I want people to think about that first. And then when we declutter, whether it's their office space with paper or whether it's their calendars and their to do lists with stuff they think they have to do or stuff they haven't been able to get to, we got to declutter first. And mm -hmm. until we do that, we can't get it organized. And until we do that, we don't know what kind of planner to get you. We don't know what kind of bins to put your stuff in. So it's never, ever about the stuff. It's I love it. What happens here first? Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> I, I, I just want to point out to people how this affects you in terms of the streamlined connection. Everything that Lisa just mentioned, how you make the decision, set the boundaries, communicate it, how you set up the system first, declutter, and then organize, and then you know what the tools, the appropriate tools will be, if you even need them at all. Mm -hmm. um, that 
is what creates a more than organized life. That's what the streamlined connection is all about. It is how to get your mindset in line with your beliefs and desires so that your actions get you those desires. And when you approach it in that way, there are incremental things you can do. You can work on each step of that. How can I make better decisions? How can I set better boundaries? And each decision and boundary in succession gives you incremental progress that gets you exponential results in your productivity, your satisfaction and meaningful life. Um, so every day becomes more joyful. You will feel more in control while at the same time experiencing more freedom because you have confidence and freedom is actually confidence in in standing for what you believe in and what you desire and, and lining those things up. That's what freedom really is. It's not about not being told what to do. It's about telling yourself what you want to do to get the thing you aspire to get, whether it's a home, a family, a better job, money, what ever that is. So I love this conversation. It went so much better than I anticipated. Not oh. that I didn't think it was not going to be good, but it was <laughs> it was to the nth degree. I love it. Um, okay, so just know that I always welcome feedback, comments, questions that can be answered uh, in a future episode. So you can email me at morethanorganized.net. Sorry, Miriam at morethanorganized.net. It would help if you, you know, actually addressed it to me. Um, next time on the show, I will be talking to Kathy DeNoyer. She runs a really popular um, online group that does organizing. So we'll see how organizing for a group works. Um, and tell all your friends because it's way more fun to get organized together, right? Watch this show. Follow me. Follow Lisa. Get involved in the conversation. You never know whose perspective is going to resonate right for you. And that's the whole point of it. So as always, you can visit morethanorganized.net to get all the resources there. Um, Kathy's got uh, five, oh gosh, where's my thing? Five productivity tips for working from home. And you can find the details of how to find that as well um, in the description. Um, I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.